What's going on, everyone? Uh, today, I want to take a look at the Broadsword. The Broadsword's been around since the first generation of Death Souls. It's a pretty good weapon that's seen a couple subtle changes over time. Uh, one of the big changes that's actually seen has been that it is a little bit faster and a little bit uh, stronger. And so you'll be able to see kind of its strengths played out in this run and also some of its weaknesses. Uh, one of the biggest weaknesses is that it is still, despite being a uh, faster weapon than it was in the first iteration of Death Cells, it is still pretty slow. And there's a little bit of a delay for attack canceling, uh, especially on that third and final strike. So you have to be pretty uh, intentional about uh, how you're going to hit enemies, uh, especially field experiments. Uh, so this is a custom mode run and one of the uh, weapons that I decided to go with was uh, Cudgel. And what Cudgel does is that it gives you stun on parry. And that's going to be very, very valuable for me in this run because uh, because Broadsword requires sometimes a little bit of maneuvering. Uh, this allows me to kind of forego that a little bit. So enemies are kind of locked in place. I can just start smacking them and then we're good to go. And uh, right here I get pretty lucky with uh, getting two straight uh, skills. Uh, so I don't actually have to worry about much. So I can just use that bomb right away and I'm good to go. One big thing with this run is going to be uh, crowd control. So these are things that I'm going to need such as um, stun grenades, wolf traps, death orbs, and uh, powerful grenades. Anything that can uh, take care of mobs because Rod Sword can't really do that due to its lack of uh, speed. It's a little bit more difficult to cancel attacks. So in order to get the most out of the draw, my parry game pretty much has to be on point for the majority of it. Uh, one thing to note is that bosses are kind of immune to stun after the first few times. So Cudgel will still do the job, it will still stun bosses, but it's going to be a little bit more of a painstaking process. But the nice thing about Broadsword is that once you do lock an enemy into place, um, either through Wolf Grenade, Stun Grenade, or even like an Apex, like uh, there's literally an Apex that Broadsword and Nutcracker can get, and it's called Stun the Victim, and it does exactly what you think it does. It locks the victim in place, and you can just go to town on them. And you can actually do your three hit combo, which is kind of nice. So needless to say, this is a much better survival weapon than it is a brutality weapon. I really do not advise using this as a um, brutality weapon because it's very, very slow. If you want to go bulky, you might as well just be with uh, survival. Alright, so we get the 30 kills pretty easily. Um, so now, when I'm looking at weapons... I kind of want something that's going to give me that good crowd control. And um, while that death orb does look pretty toasty, um, ultimately I am going to take this powerful grenade um, because I feel that in promenade, especially, it's going to do a good job of getting rid of certain things, such as the uh, protector. The protector is probably the most difficult thing to deal with in promenade. Uh, that's where you get most of the melee stacks. That's where you get typically most of your problems. So in a survival tradition, always take necromancy because you never know when you're going to get hit and then you want to get the health back. A broadsword also has the 50% uh, max HP Affix, which paired with necromancy ends up being actually like a really really good thing There are currently thunderstorms outside right now, so uh, if you guys hear some of that in the background I apologize. I uh, do not control the weather unfortunately. Otherwise, it would not be having a thunderstorm 
I almost got very, very reckless right there and uh, almost took a ton of damage for that. It would have been completely pointless. So the parry game really has to be uh, top notch here. Otherwise, uh, this run, it's just not going to happen. Uh, something I didn't mention about the broadsword is that it does have uh, some attack power behind you, especially on that third strike because uh, graphic-wise, we're reaching all the way behind you. So you are definitely going to be hitting some, at least some enemies. Um, kind of get careless, take a hit there that I didn't need to take. But I get it, I get my health back really quickly. Luckily I get the, uh, the bob. One beautiful thing about the broadsword is that you can absolutely change directions quickly. So this is just kind of chaotic fight. That that range might not be the best sometimes, so you know, having to deal with uh, failed experiments, I kind of jump all over the place, and they'll avoid your attacks, and they're just a pain. They're just a pain. I don't know how else to describe it. I do have the invisibility clo cloak on right now. That's mostly just for um, having that survival. I'm going to get rid of it at some point. I don't remember where, but it's definitely either in Ossuary or right before Ossuary. So Cudgel is the only shield that I have unlocked because that actually works the best with Broadsword. Uh, you can use other shields like Ramparts, but I, I feel with the way Broadsword generally is, it's just a good idea to have that sort of uh, shield with you. Stun enemies, lock them into place, and then just go to town on them. thunderstorm right now. I am so glad I'm not driving, but I actually feel really bad because I ordered some food about 45 minutes ago, and um, it, was, it wasn't raining at that point, so I really hope that the driver is safe. I got lucky there! The uh, failed experiment jumped over me. That happens sometimes, and whew, that would have... Uh, not been fun. I don't want to take any more Mallies than I'm probably already going to take with this because it's a survival run and that's just kind of what happens. Bats are pretty hard to deal with. The kamikazes. I remember back in the uh, 1.0 days when Powerful Grenade was among the worst shields in the game uh, because it didn't do any damage. Uh, it's one of the most powerful grenades now. Yeah, um, fully infected. But I, I think it's, it's quite good. So I did kind of cheese with the, with the invisibility a little bit. Um, I don't consider it cheating, but it does definitely give an advantage. But keep in mind, elites can still follow you when you're invisible. They just aren't, like, they can follow you, they can aggro you, but they just aren't going to attack you. So, uh, one thing I do like with these slower uh, survival weapons 
uh, especially the melee ones, is that you're pretty much guaranteed at least a 20% boost in damage. Uh, that's just kind of how they are. So, Broadsword, the affix is, isn't is for 15%. The uh, rare one is actually for 40%, and that is so nice. I keep forgetting that I was invisible here, and uh, I had no idea why um, I had to uh, wait so long for that. Uh, I forgot what those enemies are called. I believe they're called runners. But yeah, so I had no idea why he was attacking me, and then I realized, oh yeah, I still have invisibility. There's really no need for me to go grab those cells. I don't know why I do it. It's just a force of habit. Yeah, as I've said in before in some videos, uh, sometimes I just need to pause and take a break because it's a long game. and Well, it's not really long, it's just a little tiring sometimes. So, I figure it's okay to take a break every now and then, it's not, no biggie. So, I wasn't expecting to take a hit there. I thought I would stun the enemies. That's one thing I'm still not clear of, is what are the stun properties for... Um, weapons like this. It feels like it's kind of arbitrary. Sometimes it stuns and sometimes it doesn't. double parry right there. I'm hoping he's... So I'm not entirely sure what hit me. It might have been the horizontal lasers. I'm not entirely certain. That did break up my 60 though, so um, I possibly could have gotten it if I hadn't uh, gotten hit there. Uh, leave a comment if you know what hit me there. But I'm sitting at 13 right now, and 13 is a great uh, stat to have for Prison Depths, which is the plan for now. Usually you want between 11 and 13. If you have 11, then you better make sure that you have good synergy already. But for builds where I'm still trying to figure out the synergy and exactly what I want out of the build, 13 is perfectly acceptable. Especially on a survival build where you're going to end up having much more uh, health and you can take a little bit more hits not many because again it's 5 BC and we're going to prison depths where the difficulty kind of ramps up to a ridiculous amount but you know besides that it's not that big of a deal like getting hit like once or twice but the big worries are obviously malice So Necro is healing me pretty nicely right now. So that's one of the difficult parts about uh, Broadsword is the failed experiments. I this is this is obviously a winning run, but I lost many many runs before that because of failed experiments on Curse because they'll jump behind me and I'm mid combo. And it's kind of difficult to get back to rolling, especially on the critical third, second and third strikes. Uh, there's a little bit of a delay, so you will probably get hit. And that's when you run into trouble. So 
that was a little unfortunate right there to get a uh, hit there, but knife throwers, I can forgive that. It's not the end of the world if I get hit by them. So that was the idea. I really wanted, I really wanted to uh, aggro those little guys. And I'm just gonna wait for the wolf trap to finish. I uh, just play it safe right now because rampagers are terrifying. Doesn't matter if I have invisibility or not. Got a nice kill there. Um, elite lacerating, or the lacerators, I think that's what they're called. The elite ones are a little harder to parry than I would like them to be. Uh, so here I decide, okay, let's go get that, uh, let's go get that teleporter first, and then I'll take the curse, because I did take acceptance earlier than usual, uh, because just because this is a build where I just don't want to be fighting elites right uh, during a curse. Whereas if I was running like a rage build or like a high powered brutality build, then it's not that big of a deal. But in this case, it is a very, very big deal. So I let the wolf trap finish, uh, and then that's only three more enemies. That one was a pretty big relief. Um, I r realized that I had invisibility on at this point, and I was just like really uncertain what to do. But I did get that nice parry, so I was able to get the kill right there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring down that uh, slasher. bring up, excuse me. So those parries, and that's why I have cudgel, because that those couple seconds of invulnerability allow me to get that combo off, and that combo will usually knock out almost all the leads. Hammers are a pain. I just don't like them. I don't like hammers. They are the bane of my existence. It's a pretty bad habit where I want to just kill every enemy on screen. I probably could have just finished off the combo right there, but again, it's present depth, so let's just keep it as safe as possible. There's no need to rush anything. Those were a few close calls that I had with that slasher, but I believe he fell on top of an enemy right there. That's one of the beautiful parts about um, getting the enemies knocked off screen, which is actually why knockback shield is pretty darn good.
so I got the worst possible hammer right here. And first of all, I already hate hammers enough as it is. I just, I cannot deal with them. But I take this broadsword because I it's going to get me more damage regardless. And it gives me an extra point of uh, brutality, so I can at least deal with that. And I forget my button placements, because of course I do. So at this point, I am just freaking out because I'm pretty convinced that my run is over. Yeah, I'm at very, very low health, but luckily, barely get the kill off, and there is that tonic I can go and take, which I think thought was up there for some reason. And then I realized, nope, nope, I'm an idiot. Let's go back, let's go to the other one, let's go grab the tonic, let's get back to around 70% health. That's why we have that unlocked. make this biome much more harder than it needs to be. And I keep forgetting that I have invis invisibility because I don't typically take it. That slasher was a surprise. I was not expecting him at all. But the run is, the runs continued. Sometimes that's all that matters. <clears throat> like, sometimes that's all you need to do is survive. And that's exactly what I did here. That's why it's called survival. Just a quick side note, so that uh, spike trap is exactly um, the same as what it does in uh, High Peak Castle. Do not go in there. I have hit myself on spikes before and it is not fun. <coughs> I killed almost my entire run doing that once. <coughs> so I decided to go with the stun grenade here. Um, stun Grenade is really, really good, and I don't think people fully appreciate it the way they should. Um, it is a very, very solid grenade, especially on survival builds. I am a big personal fan of it. So now I decide to go with Gastronomy, because I know at this point in the run, I'm not really going to be taking many uh, food items. At most, I'd be taking like one uh, malaise reduction just for the malaise reduction. And the idea with that is it gives me about five minutes of extra damage, which I can take. I believe it. I can take that into the next biome. So first curse chest, and I know that there's going to be a shocker somewhere, which is one of the reasons that I took the... Uh, powerful grenade because I just need a quick nuke. It'll help me out um, a Broadsword is great, but not good enough for Dealing with the shockers especially at that level because I could already see that they were starting to aggro And that's where the stun grenade really earns its stripes And to be honest, with that failed experiment, I thought the run was going to be over because I was not expecting it to do... I was not expect. I thought it was going to kill right away. And with those turrets, sometimes you have to accept that you're going to be hit if you're not cursed. 
And that's okay. Like, it's okay to get hit by those. They don't cause any malaise. I mean, obviously, if you're cursed, yeah, you're going to die. But it's not that big of a deal at the end of the day if you're not cursed. Like, yeah, you, you're going to lose your 60, but worse things have happened. So this is a kind of a weird mob to deal with. I'm not entirely sure what to do here. So this is one of the very, very few points where I take advantage of that invisibility and I felt bad immediately after doing it. But, you know, got through it. It's okay to use the invisibility sometimes. And again, stun grenade is quite good. People don't realize how good it is. I didn't realize how good it was until this run. I really didn't. That change to survival was a boon. And I'd actually be very curious to pair it with something like Nutcracker. The Nutcracker has a similar thing where it has good reach. So I do leave those enemies on the map because I want to... Uh, save them in case I get cursed very very late in the biome, so I have some enemies I can't kill later on And also is one of those levels where you just guess where you go and There's no rhyme or reason for anything. You just do things because you have to One of the many reasons I'm not a fan of it, but it is a pretty easy biome all things considered outside of field experiments and the thing is, failed experiments don't actually do that much damage. The only thing they do that's a lot of damage is the... Um, at the end of their four hit combo, they have a down smash. And that's the only thing that does a ton of damage. Even their jump doesn't do that much. Because I remember um, on my uh, Sonic Bow run, it didn't act... I got one that leaped towards me. It only did about 20% of my health, which sounds like a lot, but on a tactics build, it's, act it's really not. The issue comes when you are trying to uh, have a slower weapon and you're not able to. And these biters are tough because they are slow. So what you're going to end up seeing me doing is uh, grabbing them with the head and just running away. That is the safest, most optimal strategy at that point. So keep in mind, I've already done one curse chest and now I need to do the other the I believe that's the 4 BC one and there's a chance that there could be a stray one and because I've already decided okay I'm gonna take some food later on I gonna have to deal with that as well So just use the head, just play it completely safe. Because I know at this point I'm very close to 60. I don't want to do anything to screw it up. There it is. Got the 60. I'm in good shape. And I believe there's one more enemy I need to watch out for. And that's all it takes. Stun Grenade knocks him out for 5 seconds because it's 2.5. But they almost always have the 50% uh, uh, stun duration. So it may not be 2.5, uh, what's the math here? 2.5 times 1.5, it's somewhere around like 4 seconds, and that's where it, it, 4 seconds is a good long while, it'll be a little less than 4 seconds. That was clutch, and I get the triple survival, and now I know here that I have a run. 
I've cleared out all the curses because I know at this point that there's not going to be any more curse chest. Um, but the thing is, I know that I do want to take um, one of the uh, foods. So I'm going to go take that right now because I, I believe at this point I'm done with all elites. And so all I need to do now is go get the uh, food. And that should be good. And I almost got hit by the little spike ball there. That would have not been good. So at this point in the run, I'm not really sure what I'm trying to do. I, I'm just trying to find something that I can use. Uh, somewhere I can go where there's enemies, anywhere that's unexplored. And I do find the second piece of food there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of those and I'm going to sell one of those so that I can get the uh, gastronomy boost. So you can't down smash there, unfortunately. Or it's a very weak down smash, so it's not even worth trying to do it. So there's our there's our uh, last curse chest. Um, I was mistaken earlier. I thought that I had gotten all my curse chests, but no, I hadn't. But I do know for a fact that there are no more of these, because I already fought three. <clears throat> Sometimes there are four, I believe, but usually three is about how much you get per biome. So I'm just going to wait for that elite to go next to the shocker and then throw my... Grenade, again, that's just closer than I wanted it to be. And I'm just going to wait for my powerful grenade to cool off here. Just play it safe. So just Sun Grenade does a lot of work here. Here's where I decide, okay, let's just clear out that curse, let's get to uh, one less melee stack, and then no hit. The, the plan is to no hit concierge, and then uh, def and then get uh, my melees down to zero. Whether or not that actually works out remains to be seen. whiff on that. And I, at this point in the run, I'm actually getting pretty used to those failed experiments. Uh, yes, they are still difficult to deal with, but 
I'm starting to understand how they act in terms of broadsword. Uh, brutality builds can be a bit difficult with field experiments sometimes. Death Orb is always kind of a tricky item because sometimes I want to take it, but if the build's working well, then you know I don't want to change it. Um, but at this point, I think getting that cudgel is better. Get a little more um, range, not range. Um, I get a little bit more power behind my parries, and there's no need for the freeze affix because bosses don't freeze as much. And plus, it can be a little bit of trouble sometimes uh, when you're trying to deduce certain enemy attack patterns, especially like field experiments will just kind of like jump behind you. And I have uh, two more, three more biomes where I have to face them. Uh, but what's nice about Cudgel here is that I can uh, pair the boss and then do my three hit combo. That was very, very close. <laughs> I I wasn't expecting him to uh, finish being stunned. Just playing it very, very safely against the concierge right now. That's how you finish off the fight. Got a perfect fight, so legendary weapon is coming for me. I am super excited because no matter what I get, it's going to be good, and I'm probably going to take it. What I'm really hoping for at this point is a legendary um, either broadsword or cudgel, something that will give me an extra point or two extra points in uh, certain stats. Uh, gets me more health and allows me to take hits a little bit better. So I do get the legendary cudgel and I get the attack on 300%. And I will be taking this for the rest of the run. So Stilt is up next, and Stilt I have to play somewhat carefully on, uh, because it is a little bit of a slower build, and the last run I did die in Stilt Village because of a Rampager. Um, one affix that I haven't really talked about is with these uh, bigger weapons, uh, sometimes what you get is a uh, victim slowdown on kill. So it works similarly to uh, the, ble the uh, bleed propagation, but the difference is that it'll, it'll just slow down, and that works against me with certain enemies like Rampagers who tend to kind of run at you. And in my experience, uh, Rampager was too slow, then sped up, and that led to me dying. So I want to really be careful about it this time. So I was hoping that Biter would be killed, but it wasn't. Good thing I didn't take the curse just beforehand. So I do have four enemies up there. Now I just need to wait for them to come on the other side next to the bats, throw the bomb, and then I'm good to go. That's the first curse chest done. So 
So here is kind of a uh, bad moment for me, which is why I'm glad that I got the extra points in survival. And second curse chest is coming up right now. And here's a little bit scary because they are going to throw those things at me, those little barrels. So I just have to parry them away, but parrying is not an exact sign sometimes. That's the second curse just done. Now let's just wait for that bomber to come aggro. Smack him. There we go. I have one curse just left. I need to keep in mind sometimes that I have more time than I think on the uh, bombers, or not on the bombers, on the broadsword, because sometimes I tend to play it a little too safe. That gets me into sticky situations. Like the last run, I probably could have killed a rampager while cursed with the broadsword, but I was playing too safe because I was worried about how long it would take, and then I ended up dying as a result on a curse. So, that aura can have a little bit of a uh, surprise sometimes, and I was a little disappointed that I took the hit right there, but sometimes there's nothing you can really do about it. And I'm gonna wait for those two enemies up there to uh, get grouped together and then throw the bomb. Run away, get the scroll, and, we and go kill that last bomber. And we move on to the next area. So I was thinking I kind of want a wolf trap, but I wasn't sure that any of those would be good because I wanted all survival because the strategy that I pretty much had in mind was that I was going to get to as many tactics as possible and then just focus exclusively on health after that. One nice thing about Pirate Captain is that they do aggro pretty quickly. So the second they see me, I'm going to be able to uh, knock them out, because that gives me advantage. So I want to save that tonic in case I get hit again. Stun Grenade is a phenomenal weapon, as I realized on this run. It is so good on brutality, on uh, survival builds.
So these biters are a little tricky, and the strategy that I wanted to do was essentially let's stun them, and then let's group them together, and then let's just wait until the next four come. And while we're waiting on the cooldown, we'll kill those pirate captains. That's nine free kills right there that I get. I almost take that uh, cudgel, but I know at this point that I need the extra health. And uh, right now, I'm essentially just going for the 60. But I know at some point I need to update my broadsword. So I want to take the time to be able to do that. But it may not be in this bio, but it might be in another. And uh, those kind of, I wouldn't say they're secret, but kind of somewhat hidden uh, passageways, they can be a little bit tricky sometimes, especially with bombers when you're trying to roll out of the way. And I am going to go to Sepulchre because I do want the extra scrolls that Clock Tower is not going to give me. But I have 10 enemies left and I need to find where I can potentially go for some enemies. And I had actually forgotten that I had taken both curses earlier, uh, both uh, Seldor curses earlier, so I didn't realize that I had already uh, defeated all the enemies on the left side of the map. So. I'm not worried about the run, but I would like the 60. At the very worst, I get a lot of cash. And there should be enough enemies on this end of the map. Wait for him to aggro. Knock him out. And now I get the gastronomy boost. 60 kills exactly. And I can leave. So a little bit of good luck right there. Got the, uh, recycle the food so I can take my power into the next biome. Uh, for the next 5 minutes, so up until around the 40 minute mark. And then I get uh, the 60 as well on the very, very last kill. So that was very solid playing on the second half of the uh, Stilt Village. So now I need to worry about bosses because I have three bosses left and Stun Grenade is fairly useless against bosses after a while, especially Hand of the King and Wolf Trap would be a much better option. Stun Grenade is overall better in biomes though. It's the same problem that War Spear has and that Sonic Crossbow has. Better in biomes, not great against bosses. Opposite of the Giant Killer, which is very bad in biomes, but excellent against elite bosses. So I really messed that one up. And I probably deserve to get hit right there. So now I have air, the whole cavalry running towards me. So, very bad start to uh, Sepulchre, and luckily for me, I have a survival build, otherwise I'm probably dead at that point, if I have a Brutality or a Tactics weapon, given how many hits I took. So, 
So luckily for me, we hit one of the curses early. So we're just gonna go straight away, uh, go for the curse. Even if there's an elite, I'm pretty sure I should be able to handle it unless it's the turrets. And five enemies should be fine. I have ten more enemies on curses, and if I decide to take food, then that's another five. I'm not sure what I uh, want to do at this point. So I make a bad play here. I, for some reason, think that I have way more on the cool. I have way less on the cooldown than I actually do. What I should have done instead of trying to run to the top is I should have run to the bottom because there was that door right there. So I do save those six enemies or the five enemies, which is it's the uh, it's the bats and the and the. Uh, dark tracker because if I get cursed again, that's throw the bomb. That's an easy kill right there So I wait for the wolf trap, and just because I want to play this pretty meticulously. That first key. Uh, then we can go to that door, and I still have that one curse remaining, and I have fought, I believe, one elite so far. So I have two more left. One thing to note is that even with custom runs, you may not have a certain build to find even though you know what weapons are going to show up. Just because you want certain synergies or you might find something later on in the run that you think, okay, like this could work really well for me. The wolf trap gives me poison and I wanted a grenade that gave me 100% poison and was more powerful. So I can do that. And I still have a, a good amount of money left over if I want to buy something else later on. I'm very thankful for Broadsword's range. So I get some nice, uh, another five minutes of boosted damage. And I'm going to go back up there, wait again until the cooldown, so another 10 seconds. And then I can go and kill the remaining enemies on the bottom. And that's the final curse of the game. Unless I decide to... Uh, take food, which I don't think I do here uh, Because I do have the gastronomy build and I'm going dead inside to replace acceptance after this I will be changing up my mutations
Real Secret Walls is pretty underrated, especially in a dark place like Sepulchre where it's hard to find things sometimes. Dark trackers have a very interesting aggro, so if you hit one, if you drag one enemy, the rest of them are coming towards you. If they're all on a certain plane. And I actually, I really like that design. I think that's, it's very unique to them. They're easy to kill, but they can be very sneaky, and I think it's, it's good design. Very clutch parry right there. So in a build like this, 1% of HP regained is pretty useless. In a tactics build, in a tactics melee build, that might be a little bit better, but here it's just not necessary. I'm well over 60 kills at this point, but I do want the cash in case I want to update my broadsword later on. Because I know at this point that I'm not going to end up with 50% uh, of my HP. Like, I'm not going to know hit Hand of the King. I'm not going to know hit Collector. That, should, that is it for this level, and I just gotta run over to the clock tower, and that should be good to go. And I still have some remaining power from the gastronomy. Um, I should have down smashed that to see if there was another kebab that I could have taken for that extra damage boost, but that's okay. So I don't sell that broadsword right away because that sword is double tactics, or uh, double survival, and or double brutality, excuse me, and I want to see if I can get something better, and I do, getting that 40%, so I don't have to worry about the 50% anymore, it's a clean 40% the entire way. So I have a really powerful broadsword that's double green, and my power is looking very, very good on this run, and now I can start focusing on health a little bit. So extended healing was very tempting, but ultimately I decided to go with what doesn't kill me because I know I'm going to take hits in places because I have a slow build, and getting HP back would be nice. I could have taken extended healing because my I don't want my infection counter to run too high, but ultimately with necromancy it's not that necessary. So I was waiting for her and I didn't really know what to do, and I wasn't expecting her to turn around. So that kind of messed up my perfect kill, but overall it was a good fight. Uh, two very clutch parries right there. I wasn't expecting her to dash right away, so uh, getting that double parry off was really nice. Got the Malleus reduction, I'm down to 2 now, so I'm set. 
and I can move on to uh, Hypey Castle from here. So one big change in 1.3 that happened was that the bombers have a significantly reduced uh, attack. So 1.2 is pretty fast and that strike would hit you a lot of the time, especially on a slower build like this. Um, that's not the case anymore. So that time when they're attacking is the prime opportunity to be able to uh, get your strike in. And I do want to uh, uh, use the head on those demons. Because at 35 uh, survival, the homunculus rune is... It's a colorless... Uh, it's a colorless attack. So I should be able to uh, knock them out pretty easily. Same with bombers. For some reason, the Inquisitor doesn't attack me there, so I just have to decide to go for the kills. I just decided to go for the keys right away because I know I'm going to get hit at some point. So let's just try to... Uh, let's just try to uh, get the keys as quick as possible, get the scrolls, and then just get out. That would, that's the optimal strategy. Usually I wait, but this time I didn't. I'm not looking for 60 kills here because I'm pretty okay with my gold assets. So the shields can be kind of, the shield uh, uh, ability for elites can be kind of tough sometimes, um, especially with hammers as you saw earlier, but um, this time I was pretty okay with it. It didn't uh, make too much of an impact for me. And get the easy kill on the slasher, that's actually the toughest elite. The easiest is the thorny. And the dark tractors can be tough depending on your build, but with wolf trap it should be pretty easy. So sometimes what I do, and you may have noticed this throughout the run, is that I will actually um, wait. I, and I did not see that rampage come. That was frightening. Um, but anyway, so sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually wait a few seconds for um, my broadsword to cool down. And what that does is that it allows me to uh, get that first strike off because that second strike is a little slower. So I'm just trying to wait 
for those enemies to pop up, and I'm very frustrated at this point. So I should have thrown the bomb. That was pretty bad on my part. Inquisitors are frustrating sometimes. I forgot that I had killed that Inquisitor that was on that ledge, so I was good to go there. So I found the exit, so I'm just gonna go for the keys right away. Whether or not this is the best strategy in the world, I have no idea. But I do pick up that scroll, and that is nice to have. So now I'm at 36, and it said I'm just gonna stay at 36 for the rest of this run. Rampagers is pretty easy, it's just sometimes you have to uh, keep in mind that they are fast, so parry earlier than you think. That would be my personal advice. We have one more key to get. And the green door is slightly up in the map, so we're gonna go up and get that. And then we're out. I've taken a lot of hits here, I don't want to take any more. So that didn't really turn out the way I wanted it to, but it ended up doing what I needed it to. Yeah, so demons are scary. It was so unnecessary for me to go fight that Lancer. I don't know why I did that. This is more unnecessary damage that I just didn't even take. I knew I missed those first two strikes, but the last strike has more range, so I figured that I was just going to hit him on the final strike anyways. And because I went up there, I knew the demons were going to aggro me anyways, so get the kill, get back up to full health, and I should be good to go, and just head for the exit. No need to go for any other items here. So now I get some really, really good synergy with the bomb and with the uh, trap. So that extra health is going to play a pivotal role um, after the Hand of the King fight. And you're going to see what happens. There's a little bit of craziness on the map. Um, and it's going to be, it's going to save the run for me. And that was, I was questioning whether or not I wanted to go for power there, but I made the absolute right call going for brutality instead. So Hand of the King is tough on slower builds because he'll kind of attack without uh, reason. And you have and once he drops those little uh, flags, that's when it gets real tough. Okay. 
those disgusting worms can be a bit of a pain sometimes. If you're trying to avoid them, and then if you're stuck with an Inquisitor. So the stun doesn't really work on him, which is unfortunate. That was a bit of bad luck right there. So I just have to avoid that, and I successfully do it. Just a couple tough breaks in this fight so far. Get a bunch of cells for no reason. I wish they gave us like cash instead in 5 BC. But then again, with the secret item they get from uh, the collector, um, there's no chance. There's no point. Like, without cells and the item doesn't really do anything. So I have to be pretty careful in Astrolab because librarians are going to be tough because I have a slow build. So it's okay to take it slow here. are tough when you're on the ladders but you have to keep calm sometimes and I sometimes I, I really fail to do that And just play it safe here. to know that the magistrates do not aggro, uh, which does a lot for me. struggle here for a while trying to grab that um, gra trying to grab the bomber for health but it just was not gonna happen for me so I decided just to abandon all, all abandon all hope
So that was pretty cool. I parried the parried the bomb right into him as he was coming up, knock him down right into the wolf trap, and then I'm good to go from there. So that's kind of stupid on my part. Luckily, I didn't take a hit. So this is where all the craziness starts. So go up, kill all these guys, and then the librarians start. And there's two of them! Which is hard because the only way to deal with that is to roll out of the way. And luckily my wolf trap regains. I'm good to go. Man, that was scary though. That knocked me down to about 20% health, which, if any other builds, I'm dead. Which is why taking that brutality uh, scroll at the end of High Peak Castle was so important. So I am going to take that health potion when I get the money. Um, but right now I don't have it, so... But you do get a lot of cash in Astrolab, so I know I'll get there pretty quickly. So typical me getting lost in Astrolab because this map is so weird. I don't know where I'm going. So I take the potion because... I just don't want to risk it anymore because I've already been hit several times and the librarians nearly cost me my blood. I'd rather get hit by the uh, bombers and the librarians, in all honesty. Those two enemies together are pretty bad. And I got another good scroll here. Got some more health. Health is going to be key here. First Elite is coming up. And luckily they don't attack me. I'm safe here. Now I need to find the failed experiment. So now I'm ready to head over to the uh, next area. And I have enough to take that health class, so I will take it. And my goal is to get up to 50,000 by the end of this biome so that I can record one more time for the, uh, no, I think it's 25,000. But either way, my goal is to get enough money so I can uh, go ahead and get the Excuse me. Uh, I can go ahead and uh, reset my mutations. So 
that was good. That was good platforming on my part. So the key to those is to uh, roll away right when the thing, right when the uh, beam appears. You don't want to do it too late. And too late would be when the sound is made. One trick I've learned is that uh, bombers will aggro from there, so going after them is A-OK -okay to me. It's actually something I've started doing, which is actually made the castle portion of this slightly easier for me. the last one. And I miss all three of my strikes. There we go, that's the last one. <coughs> well, that kind of sucks because the graphics show that it goes through the platform, but it doesn't actually do anything because obviously it's not going because there's a giant wall there. So I'm gonna wait for those two, and then throw the bomb, and then I'm good to go. And that's the final librarian. There were a lot of librarians on this one, especially the two that came at me at once. I hope that that's not there in future updates for the game, because you can't deal with that. You're going to get hit there, because you have a reset on the roll. So I, I try to aggro the bomber for a little bit, and I realize that this is not going to work for some reason, even though he should be. Maybe it's because I spent too little time up in the air. Like, if I had extra jumps, it would work. I didn't realize that those things actually will hit me as fast as they do. I realized at some point that yes, they do hit you, but I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I like referring to the broadsword as a aggressive butt slap sometimes because that's essentially what I'm doing with the build at times. That was a little scary right there. And of course I forget the second key.
and it's final boss time. So I'm going to sub out Necromancy for uh, Emergency Triage because, again, I know I'm going to get hit. Uh, this isn't going to be a no-hit type of uh, run, so I'm going to uh, try to get something that will kind of heal me up quickly, uh, but at the same time also uh, give me ample um, breathing room. And the shield from Emergency Triage does that. Also gives me some time to attack, especially once he drops the little potion thing, and then you can heal up, and then just do a ton of damage after that. So right away I make a mistake because I didn't realize Pachel actually stunned him. So, not good right away. So then I realize right away with my mistake, so that's okay. That's why I took emergency triage, because it gave me that opportunity to heal. So I'm getting a little frustrated because the healings are coming, coming a little quicker than I would like. That was frustrating too because I really thought that I had um, um, carried his uh, spin attack. I'm a little frustrated here. So I do want that heal, so I do uh, carry them. Get that potion, heal up, throw everything at him, and his health is dwindling fast. And there we go. That's the end of the fight, and that's the end of this game, end of the run. Broadsword is a pretty powerful weapon overall. I am a big proponent of it for melee survival. I personally think it's the best melee survival um, uh, attack. Um, I think Nutcracker is pretty good. Giant Killer is great against bosses, but not great in biomes but this has good range and it is very very powerful so i was happy with that run strong end uh, made some mistakes along the way but you live and you learn um i'm happy i got a win with a weapon that i had never really used before and with these uh, kind of fun with build sort of runs i've been able to uh, discover new things that i never really saw before so giving certain weapons a chance, just really taking that opportunity to be more uh, open-minded towards my builds. So with that, um, I'm going to sign off. Thank you guys for joining me, and have a good night, everybody.